Hey, welcome back. This is Mr. Kelly. We're going to talk about section 1.5, the second half today, part B, even and odd polynomials. Now listen, my last lesson, it was a little bit long, and some of y'all went and you found us up on Twitter, because we Twitter 8 all the time. We tweet, Twitter 8, we're, I know, we got some positive, we got some negative. Go ahead and feel free to send us a message at the Twitter, and uh, we might tweet you back. Today's lesson, I promise you, based on all the wonderful feedback I got, we're going to make it real short, and we're going to dive right into it right now. So we're going to talk about even and odd polynomials. Even functions are symmetrical over the y-axis. The following graphs are examples. So if you remember symmetry, symmetry means that for every point here, if, we have, if we're symmetrical over the y-axis, then every point will match up to a point on the other side of it, okay, on the other side of the y-axis in this case. So even functions, if you were to fold the paper on the y-axis, would have a partner on the other side here. If I wanted to make a rule like we did in geometry, we would say that every point x, y, or x, f of x, would be mapped to the same thing on the other side, meaning negative x, y. Okay, so these three graphs have that characteristic, and I know these second two aren't polynomial functions, that's okay, but what it means is when we look here, this point, which is at what, three negative one, if we go to the other side, we go negative three, it's the same y value. That's true here at one. If we go to negative one, it has the same y value. That's what it means to be an even function. That is true here at this quadratic, this absolute value function, and this trig function. Now, to be an odd function, an odd function means that the function is symmetrical over the origin, or the point zero, zero. The following graphs are examples. So the rule here, if we're going to look at the rule, is xy is going to be mapped to negative x, negative y. Okay? So if you have a point, let's see this point here, 2, 1. Let's pretend like 2, 1 is right there, nice and easy. All right, that means we're going to be mapped to negative 2, negative 1. It's down here, and this point is being mapped through the origin to the other side. It's not over a line, it's through a point. Let's look at our middle example here. This is a cubic function, right? Yeah, I believe so. All right, so this point here, which is at one negative one, okay, that gets mapped to negative one, positive one. It goes through the origin. Okay, the same thing, let's go to negative two, and then how far down we gotta go? Right down here, negative four. That gets mapped through the origin up to here. This is an odd function. Look at this example here, the first one. It's just a linear function. Y equals negative X probably is the equation of it, where you know any point on this line goes through the origin to the other side up here. Okay, so in short, we have even functions that are symmetrical over the Y axis, and odd functions are symmetrical over the origin. It's the point zero, zero. They go through that point there. So let's take some time right now and look at this a little more detailed. An even function is graphically symmetric over the line x equals zero, which you know I told you before. That is the y-axis. The equation of the y-axis is x equals zero. I put it here in red. So I'm going to pick some points, and we're going to see what it means to be symmetric over the line x equals zero or the y-axis. So let's pick this point right here, which is one, zero. All right, if we're symmetric over the y-axis, that means I can go straight to this line to the other side. That would map to here. So if I were you know, drawing the other half of this function, it would come back up to the point negative one, zero. I'm gonna look at this point right here, which is at two, negative one, right? So it'd be the same on this side if we reflect in the y-axis, which means the function comes down. And then we can pick a point on this side. How about like one, two, three, and then way up here somewhere. So it'd be negative three, positive way up there somewhere. So you get this function, oh, that was terrible. But if you were to fold it on the y-axis, you would have a reflection here. So that's symmetric. That's symmetry, right? So how can we write that analytically? We're saying that the function value at negative x, okay? So if you take the function value here at the negative value, it should equal the function value for the positive value, which is on the other side of the y-axis. Now, what does this mean algebraically? We can prove that a function is even. How do we prove that? We substitute in a negative x, and we see if we get the same original function. If we get the same function that we would get for x when we substitute a negative x in, then we know it's even. So let's show what that looks like. f of x equals, let's pretend, x to the 6 minus 4x squared. 
I'm going to substitute in a negative x. And I'm going to see what I get when I substitute in a negative x. That means that everywhere I have an x, I'm going to plug in a negative x. And I'm going to use parentheses to make sure that I don't make any mistakes. And I'm going to use my knowledge of the exponents. Okay, so I know that negative x, if I raise that to the sixth power, right, what's that going to give me? Negative x to the sixth power. You're going to have six x's and six negatives. Those negatives are all going to cancel, right? Because it's even. So that's just going to give me a positive x to the sixth. And the same thing when I look at this negative x squared. That's going to give me two negatives and two x's. I got to do those exponents first. So that's going to give me a positive x squared. So I'm going to subtract four times a positive x squared. And guess what this all equals? This is, in fact, f of x. So I know, because I just proved it algebraically, because f of negative x is equal to f of x, that this function of f is even. That's how you prove a function is even. You plug in a negative x and you simplify it and see if you get the original function. Easy enough, right? So then what do we do for odd functions? Well, an odd function, as we know, is graphically symmetric over the point zero, zero, which is the origin, right? Here's the origin. So let's take a look at this function specifically, and we'll see what happens if this is an odd function, what that will look like. Let's take a point and then reflect it through the origin. Let's take one negative two. Okay, that's right here. And I'm going to write this down. One negative two. Where does that point go? So if I go through the origin, it's going to come right up on the other side over here, right? Same distance through the origin. And that is the point negative one, positive two. Do you see how if I went on the other side, it became the opposite value for the y? All right, let's do this point right here. This is like the point two negative eight and a half. So if I go to negative two, positive eight and a half, like up here, that's the point that when you reflect through the origin, it'll be the reflection of the uh, function value point right here. How about this point right here? All right, so that is the point, one, two, two and a half, zero. So that'll go to negative two and a half, and then zero, right? Zero doesn't change. So I get this graph that kind of looks like this. Mr. Kelly's hoping he does a good job, and not too bad. I wish it was a little bit more roundy, right? But this odd function, if you notice, the function value for the negative part is the same as the positive, but the y value is negative. Or in other words, that sounds like double talk. If I take the function value for negative x, it should equal the negative y value of the function for x. Okay, let's see if that makes sense. If I plug in a one, right? So one should give me negative two. So if I take the function value of negative one, it'll be the opposite function value for x, which is what we ended up doing there. Oh, that seems a little more complicated. Not too bad, but we can prove that a function is odd by substituting negative x in, and then we see if we get the opposite. We need to get the opposite function, which just means there's a negative in front, right? When I say opposite, I mean it's just the negative f of x. Let's show analytically that f of x is equal to negative 2x cubed plus 5x, let's show that that is an odd function. So we're going to sub in, here's a little rule right here. So we're gonna sub in a negative x just like we did before. We just have to show something different. So when I plug in a negative x, I'm gonna use my parentheses and be very, very careful. So it's gonna be two times negative x cubed plus five times negative x. Now I do know that negative x, when I cube it, that's three negatives and three x's. So that's just going to give me a negative x cubed. That kind of simplifies to this. Negative x cubed. I only need one negative, right? Because a negative times a negative times a negative. I just get one negative there. And then here we're going to get, what, 5 times negative x. That's negative 5x. So I can kind of write this as, what do we have? One negative, two negatives. This is all going to equal 2x to the third because these negatives cancel, right? And then I get a 2x to the third and then minus 5x. So that's what f of negative x equals. And guess what? If I factor out a negative 1, this all equals negative 1 times. And if I factor a negative 1 out, I'm going to get 2x cubed plus 5x. And do you notice how that is the same as the original function? So this is negative f of x. 
And so I've shown using our little rule here that this function is odd because when I plug in a negative x, I get negative f of x. I do have to factor out that negative one. That's the little tricky part there. So part three says show analytically if f of x equal to six x to the fourth minus two x is even odd or neither. Okay, well, I'm gonna give you a hint. Because the degree of the polynomial is four, then it could be even. I don't know, we gotta check it. But it's not gonna be odd. All right, so I can actually show the work over here. Let me put that work down. Remember, the function value for negative x has to equal the negative function value of x. That's what our rule is for odd. And I'm checking this out, but I know it's not gonna work. But here we go, anyway. So f of negative x, what's that gonna equal? When I plug in a negative x here, I'm gonna get six times negative x to the fourth minus two times negative x. I'm just plugging in that negative x. Negative x to the fourth power is, what is that, four negative, so that's gonna be positive. So I'm gonna get six x to the fourth and then a positive two x. Notice how that's not the same. So I can try to factor out a negative one, but it's still not gonna be the same. So it's not odd. We're gonna write not odd. Okay. Now we're gonna check even. This is the one that we knew it could have been because the degree is even, so it might be even. We need to check the rule. F of negative x has to equal, what's our rule? Let's go back to our notes here. F of negative, negative x has to equal f of x. Remember the negative has to be the same as the function value. So, let's get back where we were. We all know our rules. Let's just plug in a negative x and see if we get the original function. So six times negative x to the fourth minus two times negative x. All right, what do we get here? So f of negative x, we already did this. We did this over here for the odd, right? So we get six x to the fourth plus two x. So it's not even, so this one is neither. Not even, not odd. This one is a loner. Booyah. So not every polynomial function is odd or even. And please don't be that student that just looks at the degree and says, oh, that's what it is. It must be even. It's not. You have to check it to make sure it has that symmetry. Now, what did we find out when we looked at a whole bunch of polynomials? Well, we found out that if they're very simple polynomials, polynomials in the form of a to the n times x to the n, where n is greater than or equal to 1 and a to the n is not equal to 0, if n is even, then p is an even function, and if n is odd, then p is an odd function. What does all this mean? Well, it means if we have a very simple polynomial function with only one term, okay, see how all of these functions have one term, then we can look at it and we can say, okay, is this going to be even or odd? If the exponent is odd, we're just going to say, hey, this can be odd. If the exponent is even, then we're going to say it's even. And this works, what is this one? Check it, even. Right, this works whenever you have one term and only one term, then you can just look at the exponent. Easy peasy. Look at that, exponents odd, odd, even, even, and we're all done. Hey, this is the shortest video I've ever made. Like y'all wrote me on Twitter when I had a long video. How about you write me this time with a short video? We're at the Algebras. This is Mr. Kelly. Remember, it's nice to be important. It's more important to be nice. Good luck on that mastery check. See ya.